Well, good morning. Uh, this is part seven of the uh, HP 432A uh, repair. If you remember where we finished up on the previous part, uh, I had just replaced C1 with a uh, electrolytic capacitor that I had, and that had returned our uh, power rails to be within spec, or to, to be good and the meter to, to run. Uh, I went out and I actually got a replacement part for that. And so now I have a, a proper axial uh, capacitor in there. And uh, I wanted to uh, check the, the power rails because remember we wanted to get uh, inside of uh, what the spec was. So if you remember uh, from when I showed the uh, power supply troubleshooting uh, sheet, the uh, power range for uh, the seven volt uh, rail wanted to be uh, within or no more than 7.1 uh, volts that we can see here. And uh, what we were getting was 7.7, .7, I think, or 7.3 volts, but definitely above that. So I went in to start checking to find where uh, the problem could be. And so going through the um, power supply troubleshooter, I looked at uh, emitted a ground on Q6 and it was less than seven volts. So that was gonna take us to the next step. Well, this next step, as you can see here, is greater than zero or lower than zero. Well, what I actually found was that that voltage was pretty much bang on zero. So it could be one or the other, it was unclear. Now I could take uh, a Q4 out and uh, check it. And I think Q4 is just a, a fairly standard uh, small signal uh, transistor, but I thought, well, you know, I would expect the rails to be much, much worse if I didn't have uh, Q4 working. And on the other side, it says check R5, R6 and R7. Well. I hadn't uh, noticed where those were in the uh, schematic. So let's take a look at that. Before we look at the schematic though, uh, this is the relevant part of the actual board. I have the board in the units uh, right now. Um, but you can see there's R5, R7, and R6 is an adjustable uh, potentiometer that you would use during the uh, calibration process and the adjustment process. So Let's now look at the schematic specifically. Here is the schematic, and here you can see where R5, R6, and R7 are. And they're located uh, down the part, straight down here between the, the two rails along with uh, R8. And uh, the amplifier Q4 here controls or, or amplifies the error term and sends it into uh, Q5 to uh, help regulate the 7 uh, volt and 13 volt rails. So start off, I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll just lift the legs of um, R5 and R7 and measure them. And that's what I did. And I discovered that R5, which was this guy here, let me move it to Tonin, that had actually gone uh, much higher. It's supposed to be 14.7K uh, resistor, but it had actually risen to about 16, 16.5K. Now, this is a 1% metal film resistor. I don't have one of those. So what I did was uh, go through my 14.7K resistors and find something that I could bin into a 1% uh, range. I need to go out and buy an actual proper 1% uh, resistor because I'm sure that the resistor that I'm using uh, probably has, uh, you know, a thermal coefficient that, you know, will bounce around, will cause the resistance to change and, sh and so on. Anyway, uh, I popped that out and as we can see now, when I replaced it, the seven volt rail is now pretty much bang on seven volts. Now that rail value doesn't really matter. And that's why they say nominal, because you're actually going to adjust uh, the meter here 
uh, when you start working to get the calibration of the meter uh, and so on. In this particular case, what I wanted to do was to just see whether or not uh, I could get uh, the meter to work roughly. Uh, calibration will be a whole different process. I need to update uh, and replace that uh, resistor. Uh, and I need to go out and get a uh, uh, get my uh, six and a half, seven, you know, uh, seven and a half digit meter. I have a three, four, five, eight A um, to go and get inside the spec for the test gear. However, for the point of testing, uh, what I have here is a Fluke uh, 179, and uh, this uh, meter here uh, does have, it, it's a little high, it's about, it's supposed to be a 0 0.001, and I think this is like a 0.05 or something. Um, it's about twice the accuracy spec that, uh, or half the accuracy spec that uh, you're supposed to use. But for the purposes of today, I just wanted to show that bringing those rails back in place and uh, using the 8477A calibrator, we can see whether or not uh, the unit's actually um, uh, in a working state. And then you know, maybe later on I can uh, get everything set up and do a calibration. Um, so the first step is to come in and set the unit up. You want to check uh, for meter accuracy and to start with that you want to get the uh, 8477 and uh, the 4328 to have the meter needle be right on zero so to do that you're supposed to end up with uh, between uh, zero and plus or minus two millivolts so let's start dragging that down and we should see uh, you might be able to see the meter uh, needle come down and you should see the uh, voltage come down there and so if we get that as close to zero as we can there we go uh, and it'll bounce around a bit again that's I think there's some uh, issues with uh, uh, that resistor, which is why I want to replace it before doing any calibration. I mean, see that we're uh, pretty much on zero here. There's a little bit of uh, deflection uh, there. Now we want to test uh, full range. So to do that, we're going to flip over to test, and we have the power here set at uh, 0.01. So let's go and set that on the 4 through 2A, and you can see that I'm having a, a reading around uh, uh, full-scale deflection there. And on the meter here, what we want to end up with is basically uh, 1,000 know, millivolts, or one volt, uh, and I think it is plus or minus... Uh, plus or minus 10 millivolts, plus some of the meter inaccuracy. Um, but what it's showing is that, you know, the meter is, this 432A is, is acting uh, correctly. So let's start just stepping through the range. And here we can see we've gone up to 0.03 and we've dropped where near one, you can see the one there. Let's turn that on. And we're out of spec and I know that, but the point of doing this test for me is just to make sure that the meter does in fact appear to be operating and is set to up to be able to do a calibration later on. So let's go back through and you know we're reading full scale deflections roughly. You can see that we're getting about a third uh, of what we're supposed to do there. Let's go up here. Uh, you can see that we're not quite uh, full scale uh, on the recorder output. But as we go through, you know, you can see that the meter is jumping around, reading two, 
we should read th around three. And if we do the final one, you can see that we're going with full scale deflection. So overall, uh, I think short of actual calibration of the, the unit, what we're actually getting, what we've got here uh, with the replacement of that uh, resistor is a, a working uh, 432A. Uh, if there is interest uh, in doing it, let me know in the comments and I will uh, put uh, doing a calibration of this unit on, uh, uh, on the whiteboard and uh, hopefully get to it uh, sometime shortly in the future. Anyway, I hope you uh, found that interesting and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll catch you tomorrow or catch you later. Bye.